Hey, it's Ben Wilmore, and this time around, I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks for working with Photoshop's info panel. The info panel is very useful for measuring and describing colors within Photoshop. And so let's dive in and take a look at a few things that can change the way you think about the info panel. First, to get the info panel to appear, go to the window menu and choose info. Here's our panel. Now, there is a bunch to know about the info panel. First off, in here we have readouts for red, green, and blue. They describe the color that's underneath your mouse. But that color information is not enough to truly describe a color that's in your mouse. If you were gonna use those RGB numbers in a different document, they might produce a different color. And that's because you need to use these numbers only within documents that are in the same color space. So let's figure out what color space this document's in. We'll do that by going to the upper right of the info panel and choosing panel options. That's where you can control what appears down here at the bottom of the info panel. I usually turn off this show tool hints because I'm used to the tools by now. And instead I turn on here a choice called document profile. And then I can click okay. Now, as long as I'm working within a document that is in the same color space, meaning if I switch to a different document that this right here doesn't change, then if I see any RGB numbers up here, I can use them within the other document and they will define the same color. But if that changes whenever I go to a different document, then know whatever RGB numbers I was seeing up here do not describe the same color in that other document. In order to use the numbers between two documents, that would have to be consistent. Then when we're working here, uh, this is telling me the exact color that's underneath my mouse. And when I move my mouse on top of the image, the default setting has it looking at a single pixel. So with this particular image, if I zoom up on it, this has got a tremendous amount of color noise in it. And so having it look at a single pixel is not really an accurate description of the overall color of this area. Instead, it would be seeing green right here, it would see magenta-ish over there, and so on. I'd want to average together a good amount of this to get the general tonality that's in here, or I should have just done noise reduction before opening this image, but that's another issue. To control how large of an area this is analyzing to describe the color, come over here to the left side of your screen and choose the eyedropper tool. And right here, there's a choice called sample size. And this controls how large of an area the info panel is going to look at in order to describe a color. So in this particular case with that much noise, I don't even think a three by three area, a little square that small would be good enough. I'm thinking either 11 by 11 or even 31 by 31, that would average all that noise in the image and give me a better idea of the overall color of this area instead of looking at tiny little pixels. But be careful anytime you change the setting because it's not only the info panel that it affects, well, first off, we're in the eyedropper tool to get to the setting. It's gonna affect the way the eyedropper tool thinks. So now when I click over here with the eyedropper tool, I'm not gonna pick up this greenish or, or magenta-ish or other colors. I'll click and I'm gonna get the general color that's in that area because it averaged an area 31 by 31 pixels. And you see it's a nice, relatively uh, neutral shade of gray. But it's not just affecting this tool and our info panel. It'll also affect the magic wand tool. So it's gonna suddenly start thinking differently. Also, the magic eraser tool. If you come down here to the normal eraser, there's the magic eraser. And also the background eraser tool. It's going to affect all of those tools. So I'm just bringing that up so you don't casually change your sample size setting and then assume that the only thing it's going to affect is your eyedropper in the info panel. Uh, but for this particular image, 31 by 31 would be pretty nice. On most images, either 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 would be fine because they will have a lot less noise than this. Then when you're moving your mouse on top of your image and you're looking at the numbers that are found in the info panel, usually I get the info panel to match whatever type of adjustment that I'm using. So if I come in here and do an adjustment layer of levels or curves or many of the others that are in here, the choices that I'll have up here will be red, green, and blue. And therefore, it's good to have an RGB readout. And when you're in the middle of an adjustment like this one, you're gonna find that the info panel gives you two sets of numbers. 
The number on the left is what the image had before this adjustment was applied. The number on the right is what you're ending up with as a result of this adjustment. So just think of this as before and after numbers. And they're gonna be there as long as I'm working on an adjustment. Once I get onto a normal pixel-based layer, you're only gonna see one set of numbers. But when you're on an adjustment layer, you'll see two sets. The left side is the original, the right side is the end result. Sometimes when I'm doing that, I want more than one readout over here in the info panel, and I don't want it to move around so much when I move my mouse. I want to think about particular areas. Well, if we're in here and we're in the middle of doing an adjustment, there is a way to get extra readouts in the info panel. All you do is move your mouse on top of your picture, and when you get to the area that you want to have a readout for, hold down the shift key. When I hold shift, you'll see my mouse changes. So instead of looking like an eyedropper, it's an eyedropper with a little crosshair next to it. Well, if I do that, now I'm adding what's called a color sampler. And I can have up to four of those added to the image. So maybe I add one over here, shift, click. Now I have two extra readouts down here at the bottom of the info panel. And if I want to, I can add even more, up to four of them. If you want to get rid of one of those, remember I held shift to add it. If I add to that the option key, you'll see a pair of scissors. And then if you click on one of these, you'll remove it. All you're doing in that case is a shortcut for accessing a different tool that's called the color sampler tool. In the color sampler tool, you simply click within your image without any keys held down and you'll add one of those sample points. Then in that tool, if you hold down the option key and hover over an existing point, you could click to remove it. And if you wanted to remove them all, right up here is a choice called clear all. And if you click that, they'd all go away. But I'm not going to. I'm going to go and leave them on my screen. I'll move away from that tool. And then it's a little different. We were in the eyedropper tool when I was holding the shift key and clicking. And if I wasn't in the eyedropper tool, instead I was in the hand, it'd be a little different. When I'm in my adjustment over here and I move on top of the image, I'm just using the hand tool right now. If I hold shift, shift doesn't do anything when I'm in the hand tool. But if you go into your adjustment and you find this little hand tool, that means make whatever tool was currently active in your tools panel deactivated and instead make this active. And then if I go on top of my image, you notice it looks like an eyedropper. So it's the same as me generally being in the eyedropper tool. So I should be able to hold shift and add an additional color sampler. So if when you shift click, you find it's not adding color samplers, then look to see if the adjustment you're working on has this little uh, hand tool. And if it does, then it'll work. If the tool doesn't have that and you can't add those, then just go to the eyedropper tool and you can do it with that. So now we have all these extra readouts. We can have up to four of them at the bottom of the uh, info panel. Well, we can change the type of readouts that we get in here. Because so far I did an adjustment called curves. And curves offers red, green, and blue choices. So having this kind of a readout is good for the info panel. But let's say I got rid of that adjustment and instead I used a different kind. Maybe I came in here and before I do, let me make a selection so I don't affect my whole image. I'm gonna to go to the select menu and select my subject. And let's see what it ends up with. Well, actually I only wanna work on the car so I'm gonna modify this a little bit. Uh, just ignore what I'm doing and know that I'm trying to select the bottom part of the car. And since we're not talking about selections at the moment, I'm not going to detail exactly how I did it. Uh, so anyway, I have the bottom part of the car selected. Now let's do a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And let's say that I would like this bottom portion of the car to be the same general color as the top of this TP, this reddish color. Well, RGB numbers aren't helpful for doing that when I'm not using an adjustment that offers red, green, and blue as my adjustment choices. It would be more useful to have this readout match the type of adjustment I'm applying. And I wish we had the choice of HSL, so it would perfectly line up with this, but we don't. We have something close though, and it's called HSB. And the only difference is it thinks about brightness instead of lightness. 
And there is a difference between those two, but that's the subject of a different video. Uh, for now, I wanna show you how to change these readouts. Well, if you go to the little eyedropper that's found to the left of any readout and you click on it, you're gonna get a list of choices. The choice called actual color means make this match the mode my picture's in. So if I'm in RGB mode, there'll be RGB readouts. If I'm in CMYK mode, there'll be CMYK readouts, and that's the default setting. The choice called proof color has to do with the choice up here under the view menu called proof colors. If you happen to know what that does and you want the readouts in the info panel to relate to this, then feel free to choose the choice called proof color. Uh, then below that, we can force it to give us grayscale, RGB, or whatever types of readouts we'd like. Well, since I'm doing an HSL adjustment, the closest match in here would be HSB. So now when I choose that, my readout up here at the top changes so that now I'm looking at hue, saturation, and brightness. But I really want to work with the color samplers that I had on my screen, which ended up making these. Well, I can change them as well just by clicking on their little eyedroppers and change them to HSB. But I'd like to do that for three of these readouts, and I really don't feel like clicking on all three of these little uh, eyedroppers to do so. So just hold down the Option key, Alt and Windows, then click on this and choose the option you want, and it will change all of the readouts that are at the bottom here, all your color samplers. So that speeds things up a little bit. Now I'm going to go back to this little hand tool because it's when that's active or our eyedropper tool is active that I actually see where the color samplers are. And so I want to get number two to match the hue of number one. So I just look in here at number one and I see a number, 355. And that describes the basic color that's at the top of that TP. Then I look at number two, which is the one on top of the car. And right here is a number, it's 199. That describes the basic color of that portion of the car. So I wanna get this number, 199, to change to this number, 355. So let's do it. When I make an adjustment, remember there are two sets of numbers. The number on the left is what we started with and those will not change when I move my adjustment sliders. The number on the right is what I'm ending up with and those will change. So I'm trying to get this number right here to be 355. So let's grab the hue slider. I'm gonna move it to the right and I see that number going higher and higher and hopefully I can get up to 355. If I can't get to 355 and instead I hit the end of where this slider can go to, then just move it the other direction. Because if you look, there's red on the left of this slider uh, bar and there's red on the right. It's really as if it was a big circle. So if you ever hit the end and you wish you could go further, just go over here. And it's as if you did, if you kept going. But I think we might be able to get it here. I'm going for 355 and I'm looking in the info panel on the right side of number two. 350, there we go, 355. Now the basic color on the back of the car matches the basic color that's up here. But when I say basic color, that's only what's known as the hue. In order to get a true color match, I'd also need to get saturation and brightness to match. So I can just visibly compare those two areas and adjust my lightness to try to get the brightness close to what I see over in that other area. And then I can adjust my saturation to try to get the general, uh, how colorful it is to be close. And once I get in the general ballpark of being near it, then I could look over in my info panel and say, okay, this is what I'm ending up with over on the right side, and over here, this is what I'm trying to match. And I can see how far off I am. And I can see my brightness, I'm at 34, over here it's 43, so I'm a little bit too far. So I might bring my brightness and get it up there a little closer to 43. And just looking at the numbers in the info panel, okay, I'm, come on, right, I had it, that. Well, you can get it within one or two. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact. But now my saturation is at 60, and what I was trying to match had a saturation of 69. Now, the only problem is, because these readouts are HSB, and what we're adjusting here is HSL, they don't perfectly correspond. I really wish they did. 
if they did, then moving the lightness slider would only change the bottom number, and moving saturation would only change this. But because they don't match, when I adjust saturation, this bottom number will probably change too. So anyway, I'm at 60 right now, I want 69, so let's bring this up a bit. Uh, there's 69. You notice that my brightness changed a little. And so now I'll adjust my brightness, and I bet you that saturation will change. Don't oh, there, we, oh, I had it. Let me change this number. Uh, there. Okay, 355, 69, 43, they match. That means that right now that exact spot where the number two is perfectly matches this exact spot where the number one is. That doesn't mean the entire bottom part of the car is gonna look like it matches this because we were only looking at a little bitty area right here and a little bitty area here. And it depends. Did I choose a bright part of the car or a dark part of the car? That would make a big difference. So in general, this can be helpful for matching colors, but in the end, you usually need to fine tune it to get the overall look to be good. But remember, to change the readout of all of these, you can hold on the Option key when you click this eyedropper, then whatever you choose here is going to change all the settings down here at the bottom. It doesn't change the one up here, though. Remember, the default setting is actual color if you want to get it back to normal. Then, the setting here describes where your mouse is within the image. And the measurement system can be changed by clicking this little crosshair. And this setting, whatever you change it to, is also going to affect your rulers. So if you ever change your rulers, then no, it's going to change this. So changing this to inches, let me just show you. I'll type Command-R to bring up my rulers. And right now they're in pixels. If I click here and I change this to percent, then you'll see they changed my rulers as well. And that can sometimes be useful to be able to just glance in the info panel and move your mouse around to figure out what your rulers would be set to. Why? Because whatever they're set to is used when you create actions. And actions would act quite differently if you work in inches compared to pixels because the resolution of your picture would matter. If you had it set to inches and the resolution of your picture is 72, and then later on you apply that action to an image that has a resolution of 300, well, the number of inches you'd be working with would be quite different between those two images as far as how many pixels that ends up with. And if this was set to percent, then when I end up making a selection that is halfway across the document, that's the, how big the selection is, it would always extend halfway across the document when I apply that action, as long as it was created with a setting in use. So I'm looking over here at the info panel all the time when I make actions to figure out how your measurements going to be recorded. And I often click right here to change them. But then let's take a look at other things related to adjustments. Remember, we have the before numbers on the left and the after numbers on the right. So because I had a selection when I applied the adjustment I just made, the area up here and the area in the sky, those areas didn't change. And so the numbers on the left and the numbers on the right are consistent. And it's only down here where the car is that we actually applied our adjustment. So there you can see the before numbers on the left and the after numbers on the right. And it doesn't matter what measurement system you use, they should be pretty darn close to matching because we got those numbers to match. They should be consistent when you switch between various uh, ways of measuring. They should still be pretty darn close to matching. But there are some things we can change about this and there are also some oddities. Let's take a look at the layers that are in this document. I'll turn them all off from the top down. Well, here's what the actual base image looks like. Then I have my adjustment layer, which made the color of the car change. And then on top of that, I actually replaced the sky before we started this video. So I'll turn that on and you can see our new more dramatic sky. Well, let's make an adjustment, but let's do the adjustment below the sky because I want it to only affect the TPs and other things. I don't want it to affect the look of the sky. And to make it obvious, I'm gonna come over here and use a hue and saturation adjustment layer that works on the whole image. And just to show you what's going on with these numbers that are in the info panel and some oddities about them, I'm gonna take the saturation and bring it all the way down to zero. That's gonna make the image black and white. 
So the way adjustment layers work is they affect all the layers that are underneath and none of the layers that are above them. And therefore this adjustment is making the image that's underneath black and white and it shouldn't affect the sky. But the way you make shades of gray when you're thinking about red, green, and blue is you make them perfectly balanced. And look what happened. Readout number one started out out of balance. That means it had color and it ended up balanced. That means it's a shade of gray. And the same thing happened in number two and the same thing happened in number three. It's as if all three areas are going to black and white, but that shouldn't be the case because if I go here to my eyedropper, one of those, that is sampler number three, is on my sky. I didn't make the sky turn black and white. It's sitting on a layer above. And so why is number three changing? If I turn off the eyeball on this adjustment layer, you'll see it had color in there on number three. And then I turn it on, it looks like all the colors sucked out. But when I turn this adjustment layer on and off, I don't see the sky changing. Look right about in here. And you'll see when I turn it on and off, nothing's changing. It's only if I were to move this adjustment layer so it's at the top of my layer stack, then it would change. And now if I turn it on and off, can you see the difference in the sky? How there's hints of blue and there's hints of yellow in that sky? So why the heck is it that the numbers in the info panel are telling me that area number three used to have color in it because these used to be out of balance, but now they're balanced. This adjustment layer should not affect what's on top. Well, that's an oddity when it comes to the info panel that can be kind of annoying. If you go to the side menu of the info panel and you choose panel options, there's a choice in here that can help us out. And it's right down here. It says always show composite color values. To me, that's a really confusing name, but it's gonna do two different things. What it should be called is accurately tell me what's underneath each of my color samplers and only show me the after numbers in the info panel because that's what it's going to do. So in the info panel, you see how we have the before and the after numbers. Well, when I turn this on, we're only going to see the after numbers in there. We're not going to see the before ones. And now when I look at the numbers here for number one, they're balanced. That means it's a shade of gray. For number two, they're balanced. That means it's a shade of gray. And for number three, which is on the sky, which is not adjusted and therefore should still have a hint of color, they're no longer balanced. That means it's accurately telling me the color that's in that area. But it's only gonna do that if I went to the side menu, chose panel options, and I turned on always show composite color values. Uh, I wish I could get that and also the before and after numbers. I wish they'd put two check boxes there saying always make the numbers accurate and the other one would be show before and after numbers, whatever. But that's what I, I have to do. And just so you know up here, if you see these settings, this does the same thing as clicking this eyedropper right here for this readout where it says second color readout. That's just a repeat of what you get if you clicked on this eyedropper icon right here. And this one right here, that's just a repeat of what's under this little crosshair, uh, the menu to get there. So you can ignore those. You can just get to them from in here. Then this area here determines what information is shown below uh, the info uh, numbers. And this is how I usually have mine set up. So let's click OK. So there you go. You hopefully have learned a few things about the info panel that you might not have known before. And I use the info panel every single day I work in Photoshop, so I consider the information we covered to be essential. So I'm Ben Wilmore, and I'll see you next time.